May grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God, the Father, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Word of God, which is the basis of the sermon this morning, is found in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 2, verse 2, one verse, where we read as follows, that portion of the Bible, God's Word, which will be the sermon text this morning. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. So far the text. In the name of Jesus, who is coming soon, visibly, to end the world and judge as we just confessed in the Apostles' Creed, the quick and the dead, the living and the dead at that time. Have you ever been in court? Have you ever been before a judge? Any of you? Ever been on trial before a judge? Well, you will be. Everyone will be. Everyone will be judged. Everyone. Even pastors. The book of Revelation, John saw a vision of the end of the world, and he described it in these words. I saw the dead, small and great, and the books were opened, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man. Everyone will be judged. No one, no human being dare think he is the one exception. And who will the judge be that you appear before? It will be none other than Jesus Christ himself. You will see him in all his glory, and he will be your judge. The Bible clearly says, The day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. And again, the Bible over and over again says, again, quote, The Lord Jesus Christ shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Again, the Bible says, quote, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, unquote. Again, the Bible says, the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, unquote. Again, the Bible says, quote, he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man, that's Jesus, whom he, God, hath ordained whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him, Jesus, from the dead. That's your proof that all of this is true and that he will be your judge. Now, when is Judgment Day? When will this be? Well, there's actually two Judgment Days for most people. First of all, the day you die. The Bible says you will be judged on that day, as was uh, in the story that Jesus told of Lazarus and the rich man. Uh, the day you die. Uh, it, the Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So the second your soul leaves your body, you will be judged by Jesus. That's the first judgment day. God means business. This is no joke. There was a rabbi once, his name was Jachanan ben Zekai. And uh, he was sick and near death on his deathbed. And some of the members of his congregation came to visit him. And as soon as they walked into his room, 
the rabbi broke into tears and he was weeping and this really was a downer for the members of his congregation because they looked up to this man as their spiritual guide and here he is weeping <laughs> on his deathbed and, and, and so they were shocked and they say, Rabbi, light of Israel, hammer of God, right hand pillar, why weepest thou? And the rabbi, through his tears, he said, he said, if I was going to appear before an earthly king, who would judge me? And that earthly king is here today and gone tomorrow and in his grave. And if I was going to appear before a judge, an earthly king, even if he were angry with me, his anger would not last forever. And if I was going to appear before an earthly king who would throw me into prison, I know it would not be a, a prison that would last forever. And if he even condemned me to death, I knew it would not be eternal death. And if I was going to appear before a judge, an earthly judge who I could smooth talk and sweet talk with clever words, and who I could bribe with riches, even then I would weep. But how much more before the King of Kings, God Almighty, who I will now appear before, and who will judge me, and he's not here today and gone tomorrow, but he lives forever. And his judgment is forever. And if he be angry with me, he will be angry with me forever. And if he throw me into prison, it will be forever. And if he condemns me to death, it will be eternal death. And I cannot sweet talk him. And I cannot bribe him. How much more should I weep? Private judgment, private judgment when we die. And uh, it's no joke. But then there will be also a public judgment. Before all people, will all the dead will rise and all from Adam and Eve down. The whole human race will be gathered before Jesus Christ on the great public day of judgment when Christ comes again visibly. Yes, he came the first time, not to judge us, but to save us from our judgment, to take that judgment upon himself. He came the first time to live a perfect, sinless life himself, and then offer that perfect life in our place and take upon himself our sinful life and die and pay the punishment of hell, being forsaken of God. The first time he came to Jerusalem to die for everyone else's sins, that he will come again, he said, just as he came the first time, but not in humility to die not in humility to save us, but he will come on the last day to end the world and to judge everyone else. Just as he was judged by man, so he will now come to judge all men. And it will be a public judgment, the Bible assures us. Now when he comes, that's what this text is talking about. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. When he comes to judge us publicly, he will not come as a cruel king, a tyrant with anger and hatred and vengeance and slapping us with the greatest uh, punishment possible, but he will come to judge according to truth. Wouldn't that be great if all the courtrooms in the, in the land were this way? Where the truth was always brought out and nothing but the truth. And there was no innocent people punished. And the guilty were punished properly. 
It's not the way it is in human courts, but it will be that way in God's court. It will be in accordance with truth, according to truth, because God knows the truth. He knows all the truth. In other words, he will judge righteously. He will judge justly. He will judge with equity. Not as a cruel tyrant, but with truth. Now, that should put fear into everyone's heart. Because God knows the truth about each one of us. Can't hide it from him. Can't fool him like we can fool people. We can fool people into thinking we're good people and we're deserving of eternal life in heaven. Oh, yeah, most people think they're deserving of heaven and most other people are deserving of heaven. We can fool other people into thinking we're good, but we can't fool God. His judgment will be according to truth. Not a facade, not an outward appearance, as Isaiah, in our reading a, a moment ago, prophesied. He will judge your actions, everything you did in life, in this world. He will judge your conversation, all your words, and he will judge all of your thoughts, every thought you ever thought. In other words, he will judge your entire life. Now that should uh, put fear into everybody, because you can't fool the judge. And he has given us his law. You can't say that we didn't know what the judgment will be based on. Uh, we have the Ten Commandments. Most people ignore them. They don't care about it. They haven't memorized them. You ask most people, what's the law of God? They don't know. They don't care. It's part of their sinfulness. They don't march according to God's commandments. They march according to their flesh and to the people around them, what the Bible calls the world. They might be righteous in the eyes of the world, but God judges on the basis of his law. And everybody knows the law of God because he's given that law in their conscience, the Bible tells us. And he's repeated it over and over and over again in the Bible. And so we have it. We know what the judgment will be based on. It won't be some big surprise to everybody. Oh, I didn't know we were supposed to do that. I didn't know our Creator gave us that command. Nobody will be able to make that excuse. For example, the Bible says in one place, among many, quote, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Can it be any clearer? There you have it. There's the law. And he'll judge. That's just one example. We have ten commandments. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. The truth will come out on the day of judgment. The Bible says, The Lord cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. And he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Unquote. Again, the Bible says, The Lord comes, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, unquote. And the Bible says there is no respect of persons with God. It doesn't play favorites. Nobody has an in with a judge. Can't bribe him. Can't sweet talk him. We are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. Sin is sin is sin. I don't care if you're a Jew or a Gentile. Sin in a Jew is sin in a Gentile. 
sin in a man is like sin in a woman. Sin in a child is like sin in an adult. Sin in a church member is like sin in a non-church member. With God, there is no respecter of persons. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. We can fool people all our lives, but you can't fool God. And He's your judge. There was two young men who went to college together many years ago. They were in the same class. They graduated together. One went on to become an eminent judge. The other went into business and became very wealthy in a successful business. But then the business had hard times and began to fail and then finally went bankrupt. And the successful businessman was bankrupt. And he had to now get a job, start all over again, from scratch. So he got a job, but he didn't want to be patient this time. He didn't want to wait and work his way up. He became dishonest and he embezzled from his employer. He tried to get it the fast way, the easy way. But he was caught. He was charged with embezzlement. And so they go to court, and there could be prison time. There could certainly be a fine. And lo and behold, who do you think the judge was that he appeared before? His old college buddy. Well, he thought he could sweet talk him. So he pleaded guilty, thinking, well, he'll have pity on me. He'll have mercy on me. And I won't have to go to prison. Maybe they'll just be a little, the minimum fine. They'll take it easy on me. Well, his old college buddy heard the case. He says, I want to deliberate on this for two days. And then I'll give you my, my decision, my judgment. Two days later, the court convened, and the judge came in and pronounced sentence. He said, you've pleaded guilty. You did steal all that money. I'm not going to send you to prison. But I am going to impose upon you the highest fine the law allows. But then the judge said, but I have just written out a personal check for the entire fee, the entire penalty. My own personal check, I've given it to the bailiff. I've paid the highest fine possible for you in your place. Now, lest you think the judge was wealthy, he was not. And it caused him great financial straits to do this for his friend. He could not circumvent the law. The penalty had to be paid, but the judge paid it at his own loss. That is what God, your judge, Jesus Christ, your judge, has done for each one of you. Exactly the same Thing. Your judge, who you will appear before, has already paid your fine, the great fine of sin, in your place for you. Jesus paid your debt. The wages of sin is death. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I have just quoted two verses from this same book of the Bible, Romans, that the Holy Ghost inspired the Apostle Paul to write. This he says in chapter 2, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. There is a judgment of God. 
And he says in chapter 3, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's nobody who's innocent. We must all plead guilty. If you stand before that judge and you say, I'm innocent, you're done. You're never going to heaven. I know most people in this world think they're good people. and think they're not guilty. Before the judge of the universe. But they are. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3. And many other places in the Bible. We're all guilty. We better plead guilty. When we are judged. And then it goes on to say in chapter 6 of Romans, and the wages of sin is death. That's what we're all, that's, that's the ultimate penalty for our guilt. We all deserve death eternally in hell for our sins. But then it goes on to say, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the good news. He was wounded for our transgressions, Isaiah also says. The coming Messiah, our judge, he was wounded for our transgressions. Believe it. He rose from the dead to assure you it's true, that you can believe it. If he'd stayed dead just like every other person who started every other false religion in this world, if he'd stayed dead, it would be just another false religion, another false god. But he rose from the dead to prove he is the true God and what a merciful God he is, what a loving God he is. So, for those who trust in Jesus Christ as their substitute, their God who came down from heaven and died for them, they will be judged, just like everybody else. Everyone will be judged. But when the believers in Christ are judged, Jesus will find no sin in them because the judge himself will say, I've already paid for your sin. And my death wasn't meaningless. It paid for all your sins. Your debt is paid. So for the true believer, and when I say true believer, not the fake believers, not the hypocrites, not the ones who think that they can throw all their sins on Jesus and just keep on sinning without repentance, but the true repentant believers who strive now to, to obey the laws of God as God gives them the strength and the ability through the Holy Ghost dwelling within them, who are truly born again new creatures who now love the law of God and love God and hate sin. The true believers. Remember the Bible does warn, if we sin willfully... After that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment. I'm talking about true believers. Like Joseph that we're studying in the book of Genesis, who repented of his sins, who strove against sin. For the true believer... <laughs> When he reads, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. Then the judgment carries no terror, no fear. Because we know that the truth is that our sins have already been paid in full by Jesus Christ. So now... When we read about the coming judgment that each one of us w will and must go through, there's no fear, but rather, 
Well, that'll be the day of fulfillment. That'll be the day of completion. That'll be the day of going home to my eternal home of heaven. This will be the public judgment. This will be the public confirmation of everything the Bible ever said. This one is when everybody will see, oh, the Bible was right after all. I should have believed it. Because they'll see the believers go to heaven, be judged, forgiven, pardoned, and the unbelievers sent to eternal hell. That'll be a great day. that the believers will have public, before everybody, confirmation of what they already have believed. It was true. And that they've already been promised eternal life in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus promises in the Bible that eternal life is ours already. They shall not come into condemnation. The Bible promises We already have eternal life if we believe in Christ alone as our God and Savior. We already have it. Judgment Day won't interrupt that. Death will not interrupt that. We'll just continue on in our eternal life. As Jesus said, as Jesus promised, as our judge gave his oath to us, Whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of man's understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.